Hello and welcome back to our KSP career where today I will be building a Duna return lander. Uh, so what is a return lander? Basically we have lots of experiments to go to Duna and land on the surface, perform some experiments, but there are contracts requiring the ship to return back from Duna and bring that science back to Kerbin. Now, all of my ships and the science stuff that I've launched is basically was one way. It goes there, it sticks there and it transmits the science back. However, this little one will be designed to get there, do its thing and then return all the way back and hopefully re-enter and land on Kerbin. Yes, sounds like a lot. Hopefully you will get a chance to see it and I'm actually hoping that it will go well. Now, I don't want to cram too many experiments, however, I do want to be... What am I kidding? I want to cram all the experiments I can get there. So, yeah, maybe. We'll see. Alright, so, uh, that being said, this is the... Right now, I'm designing designing a stage that will be returning back to Kerbin. So, what you're seeing here is what should be parachuting back on Kerbin. And the key, as always, is to design things backwards. So, first, you're designing the probe and experiments that are landing back on Kerbin. Then you add a heat shield to help it survive re-entry. Then you're adding, of course, the antenna so that you can communicate once it's going back, because the main antenna that will be used for the mission is not this one. This is just a return antenna. Then we add the additional, you know, the decoupler, followed by a fuel tank. Now I have to find a fitting fuel tank that will have enough Delta V to get this bad boy all the way back to I'm just trying to figure out, okay, this is the fuel tank, and then I'm gonna put the engine. I'm thinking of Terrier, and it's 1,006 meters per second, but when I put it in vacuum, you see it's 3.8 thousand, which I think it's more than enough. I was trying to see if there's a better engine for it, maybe I could get away with this, 2.7 meters per second. Honestly, I don't know. Could be. I'm gonna think about it anyway. So this is 3.8 thousand meters per second and now we have the lander which actually makes me think this is actually a too tall rocket so if it ends up on the slopes it might tip over. Hmm, alright. We will just play with that notion for a while. Let's just, let's hope we don't land it anywhere kinky. So we're gonna put here the surface ablation laser and I want to be placing the hammer which will be just hammering out stuff. Yeah. All right, legs retracted and so this is what will be coming back from Duna to basically the reason why it has to have a lot of Delta V it has to have enough Delta V so that it can 2.8 thousand it has to have enough Delta V to fly up the, from Duna's atm from the surface back into the atmosphere and get an encounter with Kerbin and an encounter with that will give us an arrow break because I do intend to arrow break this one on the return. I don't know if that will means it will not survive. I'm just hoping it will. All right. So these are the communitron antennas that will help me keep in communication on the way when landing and when returning back to Kerbin. When we'll be landing, I will actually not have this unfolded as they might rip off. So I will be actually using the small antennas together with relays that I've been already preparing to send off to Duna. So then we'll do another stack separator and then I need a big heat shield because this thing will be arrow breaking. I don't know if it will be arrow breaking but if it needs to it will need to arrow break and then get back on Duna. So like this big heat shield. I need it as thick as possible. I mean the Duna is actually quite, but the, the the Duna is actually quite thin air. However, the ship will come screaming at you know horrific speeds. So you know you might want to have this. So let's see air fins if we want. So this is me now just trying to find a good decoupler and then a stage that will be taking this thing to Duna and maybe even you know um, how do you say decelerate when in Duna's orbit, or passing by Duna. When do we do a Duna flyby, we want a, a stage that will eject it out of the Kerbin and inject it back into Duna. So, yeah, sorry. 
Jumbo Rockomax tank, and I'm thinking of a skipper. Maybe, maybe I actually can go with this one. Can we do go away, get away with this and Hecati? Uh, 2001. Uh, it's not exactly stellar, and the thrust to weight a little bit sucks. 2.8 thousand of bringing everything in. I'm not 100% sold on that, to be perfectly honest. Let's see how would we have another... How would we have a uh, this one with the skipper? Not buzzard, not nervy, a uh, skipper. Yeah, there we go, trusty skipper. 3.3 thousand, you don't say. That looks good enough to me. How much do we get with this guy? Uh, wait, skipper, okay. 23, uh, that's a little bit too little. I mean, I know that the total is 1.8 thousand, but 3.3 feels a little bit more comfy when it comes to it. What about these two? 2,950. That sounds a little bit better, I would say. There we go. So, then we want to be placing, as always, this big boy down there. That gives us some 900 meters per second to, to fix my incompetence in terms of making injections and, you know, correction burns and all that jazz. So, uh, thrust to weight is 1.7, which is great on start. 2.3 thousand meters per second. That's not stellar. That will not get us into orbit. However, let's place these. Data capacity. Heaviest part, Rodan. Yes. Good. Now let's find these aero brakes because these will make it you know, break when coming back. I plan to reuse this ascent stage, actually. There we go. Looks good. There we go, have this one, and uh, I want to place the landing legs. Four of them, to be exact. There we go. Close them up, and there is another thing that we need to worry about, which is, of course, there's the variant. There we go. Beautiful. I just love this thing with legs. All right, then we have the two side boosters that we're, that we're gonna attach and I'm gonna make it the SRBs. So I'm pretty sure a lot of you, you know, Falcon fans are now screaming, SRBs on a Falcon? Oh my God, Gromforks, are you insane? Yes. Right, now, that being said, I think we need to add some fins for, you know, stabilization because yes. Okay, good. I think that's good enough. Let's auto strut everything and then we will be performing the tests, of course. Let's oh no wrong button. I need I wanted to action group it. One, two, and then uh, toggle servo and then three open this guy up. Good. I think that's it. I think we can actually add the launch clamps. I'm trying to find a good launch clamp. In the end, I have just decided to go with the regular launch clamps, holding the rocket at two different places, and I think that's good. There we go. Igniting all the boosters, and let's try and launch this sucker. Look at it go. It shoots up like a rocket, pun intended. There we go. Thrust weight is 1.7. I've just throttled it down. Okay, well, it's a testing simulation anyway. So let's see how it goes. My intent is actually to fly it all the way to, you know, orbit, see how much delta V I am left with, and then how do I, will I perform everything else just to test the systems. And if everything is okay, we'll queue it out up for production. There we go. Going up, our periapsis is increasing, and that's a good thing. Beautiful plume. I really love this tundra plume. It's amazing. A little steeper ascent than typically, probably due to the due to the um, uh, SRBs. However, we are well on track to get everywhere where we need to go. So, and maneuver, circularize, and then we'll take a look as to how much we have left. All right. There we go, fixing my staging, 
I want to, of course, get rid of the fairing. It's additional weight. Point the rocket nose prograde. It's always handy. And then we will be getting rid of the fairing. All right, bye bye fairing. Oh, okay, I'm having an Astra moment here. Okay, move, move, thank you, all right, good. Well, thankfully, the mission didn't go exactly like Astra, so there's one thing to be aware of when we're deploying. Okie doke, I'm not gonna burn everything in this stage, I'm gonna reserve a teeny tiny amount of Delta V, stage this, circularize, and then we're gonna go back to the ascent stage and make sure that that one is working kosher. Okay, solar panels, everything here, looking good, all right. So, this guy, you only have a little bit of meters per second, which is not really that important. After all, the, this rocket can land on its own with the parachutes because, well, because I'm a cheeky bastard that puts on parachutes, so I'm not going for a full-on propulsive landing, but maybe in the future, who knows. Anyway, we are coming back in and let's hope now that we can actually accelerate this thing as it enters its fiery demise, punching through the atmosphere. There we go, beautiful. And it seems like it will be a splashdown. However, not something that I have a control of. All right. And kicking the parachutes in. Maybe I should have kicked them in earlier. Oh, propulsive landing and...